Welcome back to our Scala Spark class and we are continuing our work on NoSQL databases and today we will look at the second major category of NoSQL databases namely document NoSQL databases and the most popular of these document databases is MongoDB you might even have heard of it it's, it's been around for about I guess over 10 years almost 15 years and if you look at our engine's ranking right it's actually in, in top five place right so it's the most popular of NoSQL database beating out Redis again and one of the major differences besides the, the approach is that well Redis is like I said typically used as a secondary caching sort of database for storing some results uh, primary database less right uh, however MongoDB often is used as a complete replacement for SQL not only supplemental but also uh, there have been many approaches to use to use MongoDB as a main database so you will encounter actually it might be the only database that's in some in some installations so so what's the whole big big idea again uh, why would you even need Again, MongoDB got a lot of hype about 10 years ago. Again, something called web scale, a huge buzzword. There are even jokes about this, right? Uh, but uh, on, it provides some really impressive metrics for certain operations in a, in a compare, as compared to SQL. But of course, it turned out MongoDB took some shortcuts to, do, to ap approach this. Again, no free lunch, right? Uh, so there was some also some backslash uh, backlash uh, against MongoDB originally, but late, lately it's mature. It's a mature product again, very popular still. Uh, again, uh, there's some other business related issues. For example, since it's open, it start it still is open source uh, core. The basis of it is open source. Uh, however, that means that any big company including for example amazon or i don't know uh, ibm or google well they can use this product and they don't have to technically pay anything to mongodb right uh, however mongodb would love if you use their cloud solutions not just i mean how else would they make money i mean not just consulting so that's some things have changed uh, with the extra features maybe added as a paid paid additions but again uh, these are all business related issues, but uh, MongoDB remains a, a still a very popular choice. And again, the reason to use it is, well, if you don't need something uh, less, uh, maybe more loose than, uh, than uh, SQL, again, um, you basically need your own schema. You can start, so to say, start shooting from the hip and go, well, make up the schema as you go along. Again, you'll see. The idea is to use JSON. Basically, it's a JSON-based database. Uh, however, it's not the usual JSON we saw in our previous course. It is something called binary JSON, meaning humans can't uh, write the actual database files, right? I mean, it's part of the database system, but you, they can access results as JSON, basically. Out comes JSON out of this database. So uh, let me see here, beginner's guide. Uh, uh, let's look at some concepts, right? Uh, so some concepts, right? So, so MongoDB, MongoDB Basics programming language uh, records, right? This is a, right? So um, you can, and of course the main why it's so famous, of course, it's for scaling. You can scale to many big, uh, you know, you can scale up as your needs to store these documents grow. So basically, uh, pretty much anything you store will be. Well, we store as JSON. Of course, as we saw in JSON, it is uh, uh, it's extremely loose, right? You can add, as you remember, JSON org, right? Uh, you know, object, right? If you know, on some values, or you have array type of data, right? So that's what you are storing, basically. So uh, again, it's not as strict as SQL basically right and of course you can nest right so this is for example you know for example this standard json and you would store it right uh, as in this mongodb database and of course we will look at some queries on how to uh, stir, uh, retrieve how to search right so again uh, there are some pluses uh, and there's some minuses of course too again because of this less uh, not being so strict of course there's some certain um, you know limitations to this 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 approach Okay, so you can nest, uh, of course, right? You can store arrays, for example, here and keep going in. You can go deeper and deeper, add more structure. Extremely flexible, right? 
so uh, also so what they tell you here this is the the uh, well it's not an it's an open secret again it doesn't store this uh, this JSON as a JSON in a text format right uh, because then the approach the access would be quite slow actually right I mean you could make a pure JSON database but then the, the access would be quite slow but again so Technically, it stores in this binary JSON format. This is MongoDB in invention. Um, I don't think it's even open source, but um, uh, so uh, this is uh, something. Uh, again, you don't really, you you can't really read uh, as a human. You can't read this binary JSON format. But as a developer, right, as a programmer, we can see it's basically a JSON database, right? So uh, you can read more about it here. Um, let me see here. Is there anything interesting to say? Is there any difference here? Well. Uh, so JSON, we all well, know about this, right? We learn about this, right? So it seems it's, it's everywhere, right? So um, is there any anything else? Is there anything else? Yo, know, there's some extra additions, right? Uh, extended. So what? What? Okay, there's some dates, for example, binary data, right? So uh, this BSON or binary JSON. Right, so there's some extra things added, right? Some different number types, for example, right? So again, so it stores as base uh, uh, binary JSON, but you can anything. It's sort of say it's a stronger, it's an overlapping format, so it covers all of the JSON, right? All of covers all of the JSON representations. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, right? Some ideas. So. If you're storing this JSON, how do you what do you how do you group them together, right? So it's called a collection. So what's collection? In our SQL terms, in our SQL terms, uh, then you can think of it as a table. In fact, uh, for those who are already up to date with um, uh, SQL terms, let's take a look. So this is important. So uh, database, SQL database. Mongo database as well. Table, that's collection, right? So row, so one entry in our SQL table will be a document or basically a JSON or binary JSON document. So column, right, would be a field, right? Field would be, of course, a something like a key. Think of it as a key, right? Index, well, index, right? Joins, well, yes, it's possible to do lookup uh, on primary key, of course, primary key. Right, you will see that this primary key is assigned automatically by this again, and of course, they've added some extra uh, things like uh, selections, of course, right, uh, merge, union, right, even transaction support, right. So, it's been quite, 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 um, uh, they try to make it as easy as possible to, uh, to, 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 for those who are familiar with SQL, that's why I also taught you X SQL first. So. Uh, SQL first. Okay, one second. And uh, we are so uh, so. There's some translations again. Of course, not everything maps exactly. Not everything, right? Again, I mean that's just not the way. Yeah. So um, so that's so. This is if useful. I'll leave these links in our course materials so you can check. Right. So collections. Again, this high ability, uh, usually you have a special way of getting replicas, meaning it's built-in replication, right? So you have at least three uh, replicas set, but this is something, again, that's called high, av high availability, meaning if something breaks, right, you have a back well, backup, but it's not really a backup, or not only a backup, it's a replica, meaning you have redundancy, you have protection against, well, one server going down, right? Uh, again, so this is of course for live, uh, live, you know, database access quite important, and also sharding. Again, um, so idea is that you have, you could have a, uh, the sharding happens at collection level, right? So, meaning, again, remember what collection is. That's a table, right? So uh, documents in a single table. Again, we call them collection in MongoDB terminology, and they are rep well not replicated; they are distributed, right? So again, replica is just for the whole database, right? But this is among, uh, uh, so to say, uh, scaling to have if you have lots of data coming in, maybe it doesn't fit in a single server, right? So quite easily, it 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 
shards, right? You have a cluster of computers, right? It can shard across, you know, as many as many. Again, again, usually, of course, as a, the, as a, hopefully you won't, you won't have to do this from scratch, right? Um, building this kind of system, of course, is, you know, quite complicated, but I'm sure you'll work in some team uh, where you need to do this. But again, the idea is, you know, it's pretty, pretty simple, right? You just have a, uh, this data, you know, sharded, you know, divided, divided across multiple computers, right? So shard A stores maybe uh, part of collections, shard B stores another part of collections, shard C, uh, sh 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 you know, stores the last third, right? Of course, indexing, we already know what the indexing is in SQL, right? This also is present in MongoDB. You have some indexing strategies, how to make things faster. Again, so, and you have some aggregation pipelines for faster data flows, right? This is something they added extra later. Um, so, I think we are almost ready, almost ready to go to actually connect to a, create a database and actually uh, speak, uh, check if MongoDB speaks your language. Of course, if we go here on drivers, so we'll need a driver, of course. Scala is among the big languages. Of course, we could use Java as well, right, by the way, but we'll use the Scala drivers, uh, specific ones uh, again on so uh, we'll need to find a nice, nice little, how to say, um, we'll need to import a, a driver, of course, right? So let me see here. Uh, do we have a, uh, one second, um, let me see. And uh, yeah, we'll need to add, of course, a client, right? If we go here, right, we'll have a Scala driver, right? So Mongo Scala driver, right? We'll need to get it from Maven uh, repository, right, from Maven Central, right? We'll need to look at what's called um, Scala driver, right? Um, I believe it's called, uh, not Scala driver, it's called, uh, um, uh, let's see, what's called uh, Mongo, Mongo Scala driver. Let's try this. Let's look, look for it. So Mongo Scala driver. And yes, and it is again. Let's check, take a look. Oh, there's a new version just came out last month. Okay, but let's, let's take a look. So, and also organization. This is official organization. So, let's go with this, right? Let's go with this one. And uh, we could use also Java driver, right? There's more usage of that, but I think the Scala driver will be just fine. And uh, right, in fact, actually, it's a wrapper for Java driver, right? So, but let's let's take a look at this one, right? So, um, okay, beta, we're not, we're not going to use a beta, we're going to use a stable one from this one here, right? Again, not too many users here. We, I use older version usually, like to 3 point something I, I've been using, but uh, we'll see. I think I use 3.3 .3 actually, or something here. Actually, I don't know what version I was using it. So, ah, 4.2, I, I was using 4.2. I was using 4.2 somewhere here uh, last year, but uh, the newest version will be 4.61, right? So we'll take 2.13, right? That's the one. All right. And this is, well, they say better version. Again, let the testers finish testing. Uh, we are fine. There's no, there's no real need unless you need some some cutting edge feature. There's no need to look for the latest and the greatest. It's better to have to better err on a caution on a real project. Of course, if you're just learning, you can try playing with the better version. Of course, there's nothing against that. Okay, so that's gonna be our need to add a driver, right? That's our first need, right? We'll need a driver, and then of course we'll need to find a database. So, uh, let's look at our SBT. We have our Redis client, so let's add a, a Mongo, right? All right, and let's do this load SBT changes. And it's going to add this uh, this uh, Mongo Scala driver library. Takes a while extracting structure, so we'll do let let it do its work. Let's see and how much we how much time do we have? Okay, we're doing great. So doing quite quite quickly. Uh, now, of course, how well while it's doing the driver, well we need a database, right? So in this regard, we'll use this uh, similar to Redis. We'll use a cloud-provided database. Again, uh, it will happen to be hosted on Amazon, 
and we'll make your own database basically. And um, again, it's, it's in some ways it's similar, of course. Um, you could install MongoDB on your own computer, but that actually is harder than Redis. Redis you can really do run on your computer. MongoDB is usually meant to run on multiple computers. Again, because you have these replicas, and so you have extra machines, so you need at least maybe, you know, three computers to run a real, you know, uh, production-wise MongoDB uh, database. I mean, you could do it with one, but uh, with virtualization, but uh, probably... So, uh, probably not, not the best idea, right? Again, so these are technical issues for your MongoDB administrator, but generally, as a developer, as an analyst, uh, you won't need to worry about these things, right? You will need the credentials, your, you know, password, login, and you are on your own way, on your way. So, uh, I'll show you. Uh, so, um, we are going to do to the cloud, right? Of course, where is my cloud database? Again, cloud means just to see other, other people's computer, and this is going to be, so MongoDB cloud, MongoDB cloud, and, right, MongoDB cloud, right, it's a just data platform for, uh, for searching, so this is what they would like you to use, right, and instead of Amazon, where Amazon has its own version, and so, uh, try free, you, you can do it, I think, without, at least I was able to, uh, if you do try free, Right, you can sign in, I think with Google, right? You could do it with Google, right? Uh, with your Google account. I don't think it asks for a credit card. At least it didn't ask for me, right? So that is something I will want you, probably will be an exercise for you to sign up. We'll see how you do. But for now, I'll show you how to use mine, right? And um, um, let's assume we are logged in. Let me see, sign in. But I'm actually in, right? I'm gonna use my Google account, right? And I'm actually already in, right? So my Gmail, right? Valdis, right? And I have actually a database, right? Actually, I have multiple databases, right? So let's take a look what I have, right? If you don't, right? I, I'll show you how you can do this one, right? Let's so, let's assume I have a cluster, right? I mean, means three computers, right? Um, they're all in Frankfurt, right? Amazon, no backups because you have to pay for backups, right? Um, you have three replicas, right? And um, mm, of course, they want you to upgrade because you get more cool stuff. But again, uh, this is just for testing, right? And uh, uh, you could create a new database here, right? But you actually, if you create your own first database, you'll have some... Um, it should be pretty uh, easy to make one without uh, creating your own. What do I mean by that? Well, you will have your own... You'll, it comes with some extra sample database. You know, like we talked about Chinook, right? Uh, so let's, let's check on this cluster. Uh, this is, of course, show some stats, but what we want is a uh, database, I think, no. Okay, connect. Uh, oh, connect, it'll show you, right, it'll show you, uh, uh, oh, Mexico, let's see, can I do this? Okay, it shows you the way to connect, that's not, that's not what we want, that would be a shell, but we're not going to use that, we're going to use Scala. But I want to actually connect, uh, shows you, connect your application, right, uh, Scala, let's see. And, right, it tells you uh, how to do this. Right? This actually tells you exactly what you will need to do, right? So, quite easy, actually, right? It tells you exactly what you need. But we'll, we'll get to that. I want to show you the actual database. Uh, system says, all good. Um, um, let me see here. Browse, call, ah, browse. Okay, browse, right? And you can see, like, for example, Airbnb database, I think that's included. Uh, and I think some of the other ones are already included. These are most, I didn't insert these databases, right? Um, but so you see, um, let's take a look at uh, restaurants, right? This is what we'll usually use. Uh, is So this is a database. We ha I have, I think I have, let's see how many, I have eight databases <clears throat> and I have 21 collections. So what does it mean? So eight databases, they're separate technically, right? Collections means tables, right? So I have restaurants. I have 25,000 restaurants. This is New York City. Health safety reviews, I believe, right? And let's take a look. Let's take a look at restaurants here. And, and if I do something, um, so I can do filtering. So this is one document, right? Uh, that means one row or in SQL terms, but here, of course, it's not a row. This is one document. So let's look at some of these ideas here. So you have an ID. Think of it as a primary key. That's a primary key, basically. This is assigned automatically by a MongoDB to each document. 
you have and then rest of course is pretty loose right this is what what the concrete json was right grades right <laughs> uh, different grades different dates right uh, so and uh, so three inspections like and it gives you the grades and what what do, what do they give you so very nice good good information and uh, let's uh, uh, let's uh, find um, filter uh, by um, let's see zip code let's let's look something like this right let's see can we can do this address uh, address uh, or name let's see what can we look oh borrow we can we can st let's start with something simple borrow so I believe borrow can I type like this I don't know borrow is like a region right uh, so state and island right state and island and uh, we close right let's do apply it looks okay I'm not maybe I need quotes for this right so I'm looking for keys for documents which have a key which key is called borrow and the value is Staten Island so all the Staten Island is a is kind of like a nice uh, beach area I believe in New York City I mean around New York I'm not quite sure where it is well so Staten Island we can see right here right borrow right somewhere here oh yeah section island right so pretty nice place I guess right um, uh, kangaroos there's a zoo and all that all that good stuff right F half a million people live there okay so let's take a look it's almost like Riga right so and that's just part of New York so let's try it loading documents and I have many right so I have all of the delicatessen uh, pizza bagels and so on and so American right so I found a lot of them actually right so again so we'll look at these uh, queries right so this think of it as a select query with some uh, where syntax uh, where you select some extra uh, stuff uh, afterwards okay I well, hope you have a idea what what this data is uh, looks like now already how, how documents look again one of the advantages is of this approach is that you can store it you don't have to store two-dimensional data right you have a multiple dimensions like the address right can have a building coordinate so this is like four dimensions right goes deeper so one document has an address has coordinates and has two coordinates right exactly 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 okay so that's the basic idea of course we'll need we'll have more complex queries right and again uh, there's no strict requirement you have a zip code for example right it's not strictly required right okay so uh, or any other fields so that's the idea so let's see if you can connect is this finished yeah it's finished okay we have our uh, is build right so day 12 mongodb connection MongoDB connection, B connection, and uh, I will a uh, connection um, uh, driver installation driver. Right, commit a push. That's just one build. Right, dependency, and let's see how it works. So I will go to new color class. So day twelve. Mm, Mongo DB connection connection. I'll just call I'll just call Mongo DB. Right, extends up, right? Extends app. Right? Okay, that's all good. Testing testing Mongo DB. I'm gonna of course run it, see if it works. And now we'll need some, of course, we'll need a user. Okay, what did I do wrong here? Oh, here, right, stream ID. Oh, yeah. So my big project, I can't compile a new file if I make mistake in older ones, right? So I needed to... Uh, where's my day 12? Let's do it again. Again, you should not commit broken uh, things. Maybe I... Okay, there's a dependency, but there's something interesting. Let's see if we can see the, um, any problems. No problems. A oh, typo, that's not a really a problem. Mongo. I have to type Mongo, right? Mongo. Not Mango, not Mango. Mongo, it's Mongo, right? So I could add this, right? More actions. Oh, well, they want this. Okay, all right. Mongo DB, DB. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. 
Okay, so this is okay. But I want to. Um, uh, what do they don't like? Uh, more actions. I want to say Mongo in dictionary, so it doesn't. You know, it's a it's an actual word, right? So, I mean, it's a you know trademark. So basically, of course, I don't want to uh, keep uh, being asked about uh, if it's right or not. Okay, so. Um, so connection. So let's assume you have a connection. Where's my my database? Where's my database? Uh, these are commands on my cloud. Okay, here we are. Okay, so this was the collections, right? Overview, right? Overview on connect, right? There's a lot of configuration, right? You can configure it, right? So again, you can choose something else. So these are things you will want to use when you are making your own. So this is a free one, half a, half a gigabyte, nothing big, right? So uh, the free ones, right? And uh, you have some extra, you can add by these ones, right? But just use a regular one, right? So one cluster per project, of course, right? No backup, right? This is a free forever, free forever. I like that, right? Okay, uh, so uh, you can also pay for dedicated, right? So shared, right? Shared. Again, I, what can you, I mean, you could choose different per provider. Again, the Amazon, Google, or Azure, but I believe you can do Stockholm for, Amazon also has Stockholm, right? Also, no, no, no Latvia, right? But again, you can play around. I don't know if everybody's, I think these are paid, right? Ohio, some of these are paid options, right? Uh, so again, um, try for, maybe Stockholm, try Stockholm maybe uh, if it's if it's free. Okay, so uh, you can choose then a cluster tire, use a free tire, settings, you know, again, it's for backup for paid customers. Okay, so again, so the Duncan, it's pretty nice. Again, it's pretty nice. Again, you can choose. So you can choose Microsoft, Google, or Amazon, right? It doesn't really, it's same database, right? Same type of settings, right? So kind of nice how it's all abstracted. Okay, so I'll go back to my... Uh, connection, right? Uh, connect, right? I want to connect. But there's also command line tools. You can install those as well if you want command line tools. How else could you accept? You could, by the way, you could, before we go to our Scala, right? Okay, our connection, right? So, uh, oh, let's try about this Mongo Compass. Let's go back. Uh, oh, there's GUI. Oh, yeah, but you have to download again, right? You could download this as well, right? It's possible to download separate application as well, right? Uh, and then you can download it for your machine, right? And um, uh, it's possible, but um, uh, we'll use the Scala for now, again, uh, client. We'll use the Scala client for this. Okay, close, go back, and we want application. And we can choose your language, you know, any language you support. Scala is supported, the version. Uh, 4.3, right? Right, you can choose. Version is not for Scala. This is for uh, actual... This doesn't mean the Scala 4.3. There's no such thing, right? It's 2.13, right? There's Scala 3, but we uh, this is version of the actual Mongo. So if you have older Mongo, right? Like, I use this one. Does it change anything? Let's check. Nothing changes, right? I use 2.2, but let's use 4.3, right? Because that's what we have. So... That's what we need, right? Uh, do we have a uh, right uh, string? This is whole big string, right? So password. Well, uh, we'll need to figure out some way to get this uh, uh, password, right? So uh, we'll use. Uh, we'll need to modify this a little bit, right? So let's take a look at this information. We can copy it here, by the copy, right? Copy to Clippy, to clipboard, right? So this is paste, right? So, of course, you, your database will be this one here. Retrieve writes, right? It will keep writing. So these are not present. We'll need that. Uh, we need this import, right? And we are good. And why do I don't have this one? Mongo client, Mongo client. Okay, and we need import this. Import class. Uh, yeah, this one here. Okay. So from MongoDB Scala, we import the client and we import the database. Okay, that would be great. Uh, a name test. So nothing will work. Why? Because the URI is wrong. So let's build the URI. And then we can actually do a connection, right? Get database. I believe that will uh, will be our hello world. Okay. So if I run this, of course, 
I can run it, this will break, right? Let's see. I mean, this is valid Scala, but, uh, on, yeah, like this. And again, it's trying to do this, no, again, logging is, again, we don't want to use it. But we should be getting, let's see, connection, right? It's just not actually happening, right? It's just basically breaking. Let's see if this was actually correct. Mm, let me see. Uh, oh, we'll need a good collection, of course, right? Stop. Right. And we will also want to have a collection, right? By name, right? Collection name. So, what do we have there? Mm, let's say some collection name. You know, name of, col of, of collection, right? Something, right? On. So, uh, while collection will be db get collection, right? And this will be, of course, collection name, right? So, this should all, well, again, it shouldn't really work, right? Because we don't have, a, uh, I mean, we don't have a URI, right? Let's try this again. I think it just basically, ha oh, 130. So, yeah, it broke, right? Um, yeah, since this is again, so it's a little bit different, right? It doesn't break, but it just hangs. Well, it keeps running because it keeps trying this address. But then what's happening, of course, is that uh, this username and password is incorrect. The address is correct, right? This is all correct. It's trying to connect and it's getting basically a bad connection, right? So let me see if we actually, I wonder if you can see this here. Can we close it? Can we see our real time? No, not metrics. Right, we can probably see something here. You can see our uh, in count, uh, counters, how many commands are, things are happening. Of course, this is, this time is, I believe it's uh, German time perhaps, right? Yeah, I think it's German time or maybe even, uh, uh, or maybe Greenwich time actually, uh, not, not Latvian time, right? So it shows you what's happening right there at this different clusters, right? So, oh yeah, auto one's chart, right? You can do quicker. 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. right again so it has lots of nice uh, nice metrics okay okay but let's start so uh, we need to have the uh, we need to have a password right and the username so how do we get it i'll do it hand code i'll hand code user you know username right will be what and um, i will do also hard code the uh, let's see what it will be uh, let me see or my profile manage your account right and uh, let me see here i have it actually already set up by the way i'm just trying to show i'm going to show you where it is again of course this is completely free so uh, usually you don't want to share private information with with the public but again uh, nothing happens here right that is actually you know you can make your own project so Mm, let's see in my project uh, uh, let's see here while well, the settings user preference I believe mm, let me see here no it's not it invitations or legacy to her there's also two two there's some extra security right there's a famous lots of stories of MongoDB not being secure by default right it's public a lot of information has actually uh, even some uh, security organizations have used a MongoDB and it's been publicly accessible and a lot of sensitive information has been leaked and uh, obtained this way. So let me see where is my command line. Mm, let me see here. It, okay, I think this here. Okay. All right. So yes, I have two users, right? You can have a new database user. I don't know. Can we see this here? So authentication. So we admin or we reader. You have two different ways. You can do only read only. Again, uh, like a regular, uh, you know, SQL serious database like, you know, Postgres or Oracle, you can have different users, right? Uh, so you have roles of uh, read. This is, uh, so admin can actually write as well, right? So I'll do vReader. Let's try vReader. That's my username. So that's going to be my username. This is, again, database access security, right? Um, so username, again, probably, again, to do to do of course to do uh, read from a system environment 
the system environment of course right best practice right and of course password right again i will have to make it public but um, uh, let's see i think it should be available here password right and uh, set of, you can also certificates uh, and let's see i think i have i have to, i can't read it i have to basically edit i think let's see here oh oh come on what happened uh, edit okay that's a password okay great password and let's see this right i could do also a secure password here right so november 22 right and we can see this here of course again of course obviously you don't want to see this publicly right but again too i will change it you know change read from system environment uh, do not commit to git uh, commit passwords uh, to git and, and usernames as well real real passwords and usernames to git um, Again, of course it's very tempting right so again so what we'll do of course i could do it here I mean, so this these brackets right this means it's actually you need to completely replace it so i'll do s right string replacement and of course i'll do username the name right here we go on colon and i will do password right password okay looks okay let's try it let's try okay name of collection we need ah a name of database okay let's see let's go back let's go back to our database and atlas uh, uh, we'll use again these are the, let's do sample restaurants sample restaurants sample restaurants runs i hope i uh, on the collection will be um uh, restaurants okay oh, here we go okay now let's see if this works let's see if this really really works or will we have any problems uh, so this is a yeah three three right through uh, let's see and well do we see anything actually i wonder if there's any way to quit it right well we'll need to get something actually ah client close yes okay we need to close the client afterwards yes so it keeps running until right yeah so we need to close the client uh, we need to close the client right otherwise otherwise the program will keep running right so we need to do client and close method right easy right let's run it again yeah zero perfect okay we get in we get out okay so looks like no errors uh, again it's a little bit hard to debug right if you so we need to get some uh, let's get some uh, information right and um, let's see can we find some uh, name like let's do something similar silly uh, or cloud or in the or restaurants uh, we'll do this first one it's called uh, what's the name of it carvel ice cream right let's do this one right let's see if we can find it right right mm, ice cream so uh we'll do this um well carvel ice cream carvel ice cream right will be what uh so uh, collection right collection right here and we need to find something right find okay find and what do we do we need the key right we'll go use a key so uh, we'll want to find name i guess it's called name right there's name yeah name name carol ice cream so name uh, name on carvel ice cream right okay what does it like something missing here okay ah right we need equality right we need some extra helpers here right we'll need some uh, extra equal right we need equal like this okay so what the heck is equal it is from filters i believe some filters yeah filters 
it's filters so right so the import equality right you'll see of course there'll be more filters of course so find uh, things which equal field name is name of course value carvel ice cream and this is going to be what it's going to be find observable scala document well how do we actually see this right uh, we have it and we'll want to i believe we'll want to get a document out right so because this is how do we get out the data because this is just a what observable right so how do we get out of this here and we'll need to subscribe to this result right so um let's see uh and here i believe it was like this uh subscribe yeah subscribe we're going to subscribe to this result um so i'll do it here right to subscribe subscribe and what do we need to subscribe we subscribe to, we're going to get a document yeah like this and we'll want to print it basically print line doc to json right but we don't have a uh, methods right so what the heck is this uh come on it is it should be available import okay a lot of documents that you want the mongo scala document right i believe it's well let's check uh, if i remember correctly this should be a scala mongodb document i believe not the beast so that's a good question now we will try it yeah i think so okay so now we have a document mongo client mongo database right okay and now that's not enough so we are subscribing to these results uh and uh, this is what a success but also we have two other functions uh, this is a success right subscribe method we have a success right uh and also we need to provide things also what happens if things don't work out right so this is subscribe and um, this is one yeah okay and then we also gonna do so that's one function right uh, also what do when we don't get anything so we'll have e throwable yeah that's uh, an error right and something went wrong something went wrong um print line um got query error something like this right you know just to see what's happened and uh, lastly uh, uh on success this this happens uh afterwards uh you know blank i will i don't know if you have any functions uh, but uh, this uh, runs after query is complete okay i believe it's or you know right okay so this is again this is not i don't think it's required right i mean it's again it's blank right not required right so you only well again you want to do get something right so this will print the document yes string json and uh, we should be in pretty good shape let's see how much time we have uh 43 minutes and hopefully we'll be able to uh run this i hope again so this is so find is our select so so analog goes to select from where name from uh, from restaurants where uh, name equals carvel ice cream right carvel ice cream right something similar right so similar so SQL analog would be select right okay but then you notice it's nicer because of course you have these methods right you don't have to write it by hand right so let's try this well, let's see if this works I'm not sure it's been a while but uh, it should work famous last words okay I didn't print anything what happened maybe you needed to leave it running that's a good thing actually maybe oh, i know what yes i know it right we close the connection to build so let's do the sleep uh right sleep um 
Uh, let's do five seconds, right? Let's do five seconds. And uh, yeah. I believe Java language thread, yeah. We'll wait for the query to go through, right? Of course, you, you have a forever loop or maybe some other way of getting it right. This is just a quick and dirty solution. Let's see if this if that's enough. Oh, wow. It worked too well. It worked too well. What's going on? It worked. Uh, but did I copy everything too much? Huh. There's, surely there's not that many ice creams. Carvel ice cream. But looks like it's a chain. It's a chain. Yes, it is a chain. Right, look at this. Yes. Or am I really... Apparently, I, I was not familiar with this. Uh, cuisine. Yes. This is interesting. Right, so this is actually... All of these ice cream shops and what's the name? Where's the name? Is it really, really? Zip code Borom Grade 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 Name? Yes. So these are okay. So this was actually indeed we found all the ice cream shops with this particular name, right? Pre actually uh, kind of funky. Apparently this is. Let's take a look, right? Uh, apparently it is a chain, right? Carvel ice cream, right? Yes, it's a uh, Wikipedia. Oh, it's a big company, 60 million in sales, actually. Whoa, okay, good to know. Focus brand is actually a big part of big chain. And that's uh, actually says over 400 of them, right? I guess uh, not in Latvia yet. Right, so quite popular, right? Okay, great. So we learned something new as well. Great. All right, so that will be complete our introduction to MongoDB. And as you can imagine, you will have an exercise to set up your own database, not to use my my password, my user. You'll have you can do it for now, but uh, again, expect that I will change this these credentials, right? I will expect to change credentials. I will delete these, and um, for the task, you will need something similar: to create a query and read some data, and uh, and uh, create your own database. Okay, thank you.